All right, folks, Andrew Suter, pastor of Bible Baptist Church here in Asheville, North Carolina, coming to you with a live video tonight, and I'll give everybody just a moment to get tuned in. Here, I put an announcement that I was going to be doing a video, and uh, hopefully you're able to tune in. My camera's sliding here. Hang on just a second. There we go. So, uh, anyway, I'll give everybody just a minute to get tuned on and logged in and all that good stuff. So I announced that I was going to be doing a video. I was going to go down and be in a, a meeting tonight down in the Marion area, but long story short, that just got uh, kind of switched up and turned around. And so anyway, tonight I'm doing a video. I had you put some comments in the, in the uh, or type some comments about the topic you wanted me to talk about. And there was nobody, there was no consensus on one except for the SpongeBob conspiracy. And I'm really not interested in doing one on the SpongeBob conspiracy. That's kind of an inside joke um, with some of our viewers. But one that I did see um, that I thought was super interesting that I don't think I've ever really gone in depth with is the, um, is the Hebrews through Jude and the verses that kind of teach that you can lose your salvation. Yeah, there are scriptures in the Bible that teach that a man can lose his salvation and a lot of free wills and charismatics and church of God and all that kind of stuff, they get caught up in the idea that a man can lose his salvation. But the thing is, is they have verses that they will take you to and a lot of good Bible-believing brethren have gotten caught up in these verses and they have no explanation for them. All right, I'm back. Uh... That people are calling me and stuff but you read commentaries and all that kind of stuff and the commentaries offer no explanation a bunch of people all they do is go to the Greek and the Hebrew and try to explain it away they won't compare scripture with scripture they I mean I've heard even guys who say they're Bible believers who who deny the fact that Hebrews through uh, Jude is for the tr future tribulation saints and I mean, they just absolutely butcher the scripture with it. So we're going to take a few scripture, the scriptures in Hebrews, Second Peter, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Second Peter, and some different places that talk about a man losing his salvation. Now, let me just clarify right here in this video: I do not believe that a man can lose his salvation in this dispensation. I do not believe that me and you, if we are saved by the grace of God, are in any danger of losing our salvation. But there are too many clear verses all of them which are interestingly enough found in the Jewish epistles, not the Pauline epistles, that point to the fact that there are people who can lose their salvation. Now here's the kicker. I think that this is future. So let's look at a few of these verses that the Church of God and the free wheels and all these folks will point to when they talk about a man losing their salvation. The first one here is in the book of Hebrews chapter number 6. Hebrews chapter number 6. If you want to follow along with me tonight, you can follow along with me. Hebrews chapter 6. And I want us to notice in... Let's see here. Let me get there. Verse number 4. So Hebrews chapter 6. Now understand... Who is the book of Hebrews written to? The book of Hebrews is clearly written to, you got it, the Hebrews or the Jews. When will God once again be dealing with the Jewish people? That is during the tribulation period. Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse number 7, it is the time of Jacob's trouble. Now, if you notice when the book of Hebrews is written, the book of Hebrews is written, Hebrews 1.1, 1, 1, God who at sundry times and in divers manners spake unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days. So the book of Hebrews is written for the last days. If you're a Bible student at all, you know that the last days is always a reference to the tribulation period, not the quote-unquote last days of the church. It's always the last days of the tribulation before the millennial kingdom. Now, having understood that the book of Hebrews is written to the Jews and God will once again be dealing with the Jews during the tribulation and we understand that the last days in the book of Hebrews are referring to the tribulation period, we find in Hebrews chapter 6 and verse number 4, for it is impossible for those who are once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come if they shall fall away to renew them again under repentance, seeing they crucified themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. Now, here is 
what a lot of people will say about these verses. Well, that's not really a saved man. Hebrews 6 is not really talking about a saved man. Well, the Bible says here that these people, once they fall away, it's impossible to renew them again into repentance. And a lot of people who try to make the entire Bible apply only to them and make the whole Bible say the same thing throughout every dispensation, they'll say, well, this couldn't possibly be talking about saved people. This is talking about, I heard one guy say, well, this is somebody who almost got saved but never really got saved. Well, look what the Bible says. The Bible says that this man in Hebrews chapter 6 was enlightened and tasted of the heavenly gift. I heard one preacher say, well, preacher, he tasted the heavenly gift. He never swallowed. Well, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 2 that Jesus tasted death for every man. So did Jesus taste death, never swallowed, or did he actually die? No, he actually died. And the Bible says here that these people tasted of the heavenly gift. Not only that, but the Bible says they were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. I had a King James Bible, claimed to be King James Bible. I mean, he never went to the Greek. He denied all that. He was, you know, against the Greek. But I showed him this verse here, how that they were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. He literally looked at me and gave me a Greek definition. Folks, Part, he said, well, that word partaker just means they kind of went along with. They kind of just acted along with. This is talking about people who, you know, start going to church. And, you know, they get, as, as many older scholars would put it, they got on the threshold of salvation, whatever in the world that means. But, folks, the word partaker in the English is clearly defined elsewhere in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse number 14 says this, For we, the author including himself, for we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. So the word partaker here is clearly referencing and referring to somebody who has actually been a part of. These people were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. Romans chapter 8, verse number 9, If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. These were people who had tasted the heavenly gift. The Bible says the heavenly gift is salvation. For the wages of sin is get death, but the gift of God is salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. And they were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. And then it says in verse number 5, And they tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. So these people were saved. There is no way in the world you can look at these scriptures and say that these people were not saved. But then you get to Hebrews 6, 6, verse number 6. If they shall fall away to renew, uh, to renew them again under repentance seeing they crucified themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. So these people, once they lost their salvation, if they fall away, it's impossible to renew them again under repentance. So folks, every free will and church of God and all these people who say you can lose your salvation, what they need to understand is if you can lose your salvation, once you've lost it, you cannot ever get it back. It says it's impossible to renew them again under repentance. Look at Hebrews chapter 6 and verse number 7. For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon it, and bringeth forth herbs meat for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth blessings from God. But that which, is bear, but that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected, and is nigh to cursing, whose end is to be burned. That is a clearly, a reference, clearly a reference to people in hell. So folks, Hebrews 6 is clearly talking about a saved man losing his salvation. Now let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter number 10. The book of Hebrews chapter number 10. This is another place where all these guys like to take you to try to mess you up on eternal security. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 26. For if we sin willfully, after that we've received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Man, I had a guy white in the face one time. I was kind of messing with him because sometimes I can be a little mean. But I was messing with the dude one time and he was trying to say, you know, he was denying dispensationalism and he was denying or dispensational salvation and all that kind of stuff. And so I took him over there to the book of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 26 and I said, the Bible says here, for if we, and I said, the author is, yeah, I said, who do you think wrote both Hebrews? He goes, Paul. I said, okay. I said, now, so Paul's including himself here. For if we, Paul including himself, sin willfully, after that we've received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. I sins. I said, if you ever committed a sin and knew you were doing it, you willingly committed it with knowledge? He goes, yeah. I said, well, the Bible says there remaineth no more sacrifice for that sin. So then he turned white in the face. And uh, about... About 20 minutes later, he was a firm believer in dispensational salvation again. And so here's the thing, folks. If you look at verse 27, Hebrews 10, 27, 
So if we sin willfully, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. Verse 27, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. So notice, the author is including himself, the guy that wrote the book of Hebrews, whoever he was, we know he was a saved man. He said, if we sin willfully, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin, but a certain fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. That's, a clearly a, that's clearly a picture of the second coming of Christ when he shall devour them with fire at the second advent and a reference to hell. There's no way around it. So the author says here that if there's a, a willful sin after salvation, that they are in danger of hell. Now look at verse 29. Because I'll still, even if you show them that, they'll still say, well, these are just talking about Jews who... Uh, never fully came to the not they came to the knowledge of Christ, but they backed away. I've had some people tell me, well, this is talking about reprobate people when they become reprobate and all this kind of thing. It's not really talking about saved people losing their salvation. Okay, Hebrews ten twenty nine. This is what settled it for me in the book of Hebrew, in Hebrews ten. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden under foot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and done despite unto the spirit of grace. Let me ask you a question. The Bible says that these people in Hebrews chapter 10 were sanctified by the blood of the covenant. How does a man get sanctified by the blood of the covenant counted as an unholy thing and that person be like, how do you, how do you get sanctified by the blood and still be lost? I mean, folks, these are saved people we're talking about. These are saved people. And the Bible says that they sin willfully, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. Look at what it says in verse number, uh, skip down there to verse number 30, 38, 38. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back under perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. So very obvious there that Hebrews 10 is talking about people get, getting salvation, they're saved, but they lose their salvation. And Hebrews chapter 6 clearly says that nobody who loses it can ever get it back. All right, let's go to another interesting passage here. Go to 2 Peter chapter 2, 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2, and look there at verse number 1. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 1. Notice what the Bible says here. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in, uh, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift, swift destruction. You say, Preacher, you believe in limited atonement? No, I believe in unlimited atonement, because the Bible clearly says here that those who bring uh, in damnable heresies. Who, uh, who, who swift destruction shall fall upon them. The Bible says that the Lord bought them, and they even deny the Lord that bought them. Now, here's the interesting thing about 2 Peter chapter number 2. I want you to skip all the way down to verse number, uh, let's see here. Let me find it really quickly. Uh, verse number 18. Uh, yeah, verse number 18. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 18. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. Verse number 19. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, whom a man is, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same as he brought in bondage. For if after, watch 2 Peter 2.20. I don't know how anybody gets around 2 Peter 2.20. I'm just, you got to help me here. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog has turned to his own vomit again and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Folks, 
if you cannot clearly see that these verses are talking about people losing their salvation, then you absolutely have to deny the Bible. I'm sorry. I love you. I'm not mad at anybody. If you disagree with me, that's fine. But I can't get around it, folks. Those verses are talking about a man losing his salvation. Now, here's the kicker. We have to understand to whom those verses apply. And it is to the tri primarily to the tribulation saint during the tribulation. There's no way around it. When you look at all the passages in the, in the general epistles, not the Pauline epistles, because in the Pauline epistles, man, you find some heavy verses on eternal security. When you look at all that, we come to the idea and understanding that during the tribulation period, eternal security is no longer a thing, just like it wasn't a thing in the Old Testament. You say, well, wait a second, eternal security was a thing in the Old Testament, really? Well, the book of Psalms, chapter 51, David is writing his penitent psalm about when he commits adultery with Bathsheba, has Uriah killed, and all that, uh, all that stuff. The baby dies, and I mean, all this crazy stuff. And David says very clearly, uh, let me see if I can find it here. Yeah, uh, David says in Psalms 51, 11, he has a fear. He says, cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Why in the world? would David be concerned about having the Holy Spirit taken from him if there was eternal security in the Old Testament? Why would that be? It doesn't make any sense. So, folks, you can rest... Listen, this, this Bible, this King James Bible, rightly divided, is heresy's worst nightmare. Next time somebody tries to take you to Hebrews 10 or Hebrews 6, even Hebrews 3, we didn't even get into Hebrews 3, or 2 Peter chapter 2, and tries to show you that a man can lose his salvation, you look at them and say, absolutely, I agree with all those verses, but you got them for the wrong dispensation. Dr. Peter Ruckman used to always say that almost all heresy is truth applied to the wrong dispensation. And that, my friends, is the truth. So during the tribulation, so the question arises now, well, what in the tribulation period does a man have to do in order to lose his salvation? Well, the first and most obvious one is that he takes the mark of the beast. Guys, it is very, very clear in the scriptures that anybody who takes the mark of the beast will die and go to hell. So if a man takes the mark of the beast during the tribulation period, he dies and goes to hell. Not only that, but if a man murders somebody, 1 John chapter 3 and verse number 13 says that a murderer hath not eternal everlasting life abiding in him. So if a man murders during the tribulation period, we know that is, <clears throat> that is something that a man loses salvation over. So understand this. When you have, are walking away, apostatizing, not believing in Christ anymore, which I believe is connected with taking the mark of the beast, you know, 1 John chapter 2 and verse number 19, I think it is, is if they'd have been, if they'd have been of us, they'd have no doubt gone out from us. Uh, so understand this very clearly, that during the tribulation period, things don't work the same. And that's what I've just, and listen, all this wrapped up to say this. Things don't always work the same throughout the different dispensations of the Bible. And the quicker you get a hold of that, and the quicker you understand that truth, the better off you're going to be when it comes to rightly dividing the word. Okay? There is not a charismatic... There is not a free will. There is not a church of God. There, none of those men, none of those guys can show me any verse that bothers me because I have the book rightly divided. Now, let me say this. All these free will Baptists and all these church of God and all these charismatics that are saying, well, you get saved by grace through faith, but after that, you've got to do good works to keep it. Those men are lost. Those men will die and go to hell and spend eternity in hell if they don't fully trust the finished work of Calvary and that alone. It doesn't matter what side of salvation you put the works on. Anything, Jesus plus anything, equals lost. So all these guys that say you got to live it and you got to go up the rough side of the mountain, you've got to endure to the end and all that, for now, in this dispensation, heretics, man, they are misapplying Scripture. So hopefully, guys, I know this wasn't a long video, and this for some of you, this may not even been an in-depth video. But like and share this, because 
the ex explanation that I've gotten on these verses from quote unquote non dispensationalists or people who deny dispensational salvation, it's weak, man. It's weak. It's really bad. I mean, I'd love to see some of these Stephen Anderson guys try to explain these verses. And I mean, it'd be like doing mental gymnastics. Hello. So anyway, I hope this has been a help. Like and share this video. Um, get the word out there. That we need to get people settled in right doctrine because I'm sick of seeing too many people get caught up in false doctrine. And uh, this thing about eternal security, it's something worth fighting over. Hello. And so this has always been a Baptist distinctive. And when you, we want to believe in eternal security. Eternal security is good, but we also don't want to twist scripture. See, sometimes we can be, let me say this and I'll get off here. Sometimes we can be so doctrinally straight. Sometimes we can want to be so doctrinally pure that we twist scripture to make everything apply to us now. And we know that we can't do that. There are obviously scriptures in the future dealing with tribulation saints that are not to us. Point, point blank. So uh, anyway, um, a man, listen, a man can't lose his salvation now, but during the tribulation period, a man can lose his salvation if he does not uh, endure to the end. He, doesn't, he, can't, he can't take the mark, all that good stuff. And that's just plain Bible. Uh, if you want to get some more on this, I, I didn't go into too much depth on some of the nitty-gritty stuff, especially like in the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation has a bunch of stuff about, you know, keeping the commandments and all that kind of stuff. Um, I would recommend getting The Death of Biblical Doctrine by Dr. Ruckman. The Death of Biblical Doctrine by Dr. Ruckman. And uh, that's a really good one. Um, and man, we don't, and I'm not even going to get into it all the verses in the Old Testament. Man, if you can find eternal security in the Old Testament, more power to you. That is going to be, uh, I mean, good luck. Good luck, okay? All right, folks. Well, I, I appreciate you tuning in. Like and share this. Uh, me and Brother Randy will be up in Virginia Thursday and Friday. Thursday and Friday up in Virginia. If you're in the area, we're going to post more on it um, uh, here in just a little bit up in the air. But remember, folks, not all the Bible is written to you. Don't be a Calvinist. Don't be a Calvinist, but also don't be a free will. Rightly divide. Know who the Bible's talking about. I, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me say this. Let me say this and I'm done. Let me say this and I'm done. I know I've said that three times, but Paul said, finally, my brethren, many times in his epistles, kept on writing. Hyper-Arminianism and hyper-Calvinism all lead to the same place, and that is looking at your works in order to see if you're saved. Like it or lump it, that's the truth. Hyper-Calvinism and hyper-Arminian. Well, how does a hyper-Calvinist know he's saved? Well, look at our works. We've endured it. We've persevered in the faith. Well, how does a hyper-Arminian know he's saved? I have all these good works. I've, I've trusted in Christ, but I've kept all these good works. Both of them point to works. And when you get to the book of Hebrews, listen, a, a Calvinist breaks his neck in Hebrews, and a hyper-Arminian breaks his neck in Hebrews. It's just the fact of the matter. All right, folks. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Like and share. Learn how to rightly divide, folks. Just get in there and study a Bible, read it, and believe it exactly as it says. All right, God bless you, and I love you.